Look, I know people need their YouTube videos, but I can't go back to Reddit. I can't. You know what lives on Reddit? Do you know that? Do you know what happens to people who go on Reddit? They're, they're never the same. This is the fourth time I can't do it. Please don't make me. All right, everybody. Van Bradley here. And well, they made me. We're back on Reddit. Van Bradley has been logged in. We are going to go to top. We are going to go to this month. And we're going to check out what you have posted on the Civ subreddit for the first time in 2023. I wonder how Tokugawa is getting on. Not sure. I haven't heard from him all game. <laughs> Meanwhile, <laughs> That's so good. That's so good. Not only because this is this is just a good meme, but this is absolutely 100% true. Y'all need to go see Peppermint Butler. I think Peppermint Butler, what's this? Docs, Ek Docs Eki is probably Peppermint Butler's like, uh, you know, anonymous Reddit account because he has played like 19 Tokugawa games on stream and I'm convinced this is actually him in real life. My dad has been playing Civilization almost daily for 30 years, still going at it. First off, this is super cool. Thank you for sharing this. I'm actually gonna open up a little bit about myself here for no other reason than I, I trust YouTube at this point. We've been doing this for a couple of years now. There's like 18,000 of you here, so. When I was younger, my father, he worked uh, as someone who worked on railroads here in Canada. And so he would work shifts away from home. So he'd be away for three weeks, home for a week, that type of thing. And so when he was home, he would always play either Civilization on the computer. But this was Civ 1 with like the black, like whatever you hadn't discovered was black. So real early, like Civ 1, Civ 2 on our first little home computer. Or he would play the Legend of Zelda game. So I have so many formative memories of my dad playing Civilization. And then without going into too many details, my father passed away when I was quite young. I believe I was eight, eight or nine, somewhere around there. And so, um, you know, on the video game front, certainly nothing crossed my mind. Um, but once Civ V came out, Civilization V came out, I remember I was on Steam or wherever I was looking for it. Or maybe I was even at GameStop at that point. It was probably still coming out on CD or like a, the, a real disc. And so I remember seeing Civilization V and being like, oh, wasn't that the franchise dad used to play when I was a kid? I should give it a try. Just out of like a little bit of an homage, I should, I should give Civ a try. And so this is, that's actually kind of my story of how I ended up playing Civilization. Obviously years later, COVID happened, Civ Six is out, expansions, and now we're here doing this YouTube channel. Um, but I, I really like that someone shared this because uh, it brings back fond memories um, from when I was like a really little kid. Uh, of my dad playing Civilization. So that's super rad. Thank you, Inter Seahawks, for, for, you know, just making my day. This is super cool. I, I'm super, I'm super happy about this, this post. <laughs> Brother, isn't a single sheep inside the pen. This is the aftermath of spoilers for, mild spoilers for Game of Thrones. This is the aftermath of that time Drogon went and just ate a whole, a whole farmer's sheep. Imagine coming in, walking all the way up to like the top of the temple in Marine and talking to the scariest freaking dragon lady about her dragon having eaten your sheep what are they yeah they're not in the pen but they're, they're what are these are these the sheep are these more look more like armadillos than sheep i have no idea what's going on here anyway i feel like a dragon has visited and that's not ideal it's still giving you the food though <laughs> This is my favorite Reddit post we've ever looked at. Hello, have you heard all the good news? And it's just an apostle spreading the, the good word of the Lord to all these barbarians. That is my favorite photo. Barbarians hate this trick. <laughs> it's very rare that Reddit genuinely gets like a cackle out of me, but this post is so good. Nowhere near optimized, but here's my snow globe city at the South Pole. Okay, look. If this is not an optimized snow globe city, what on earth is happening here? This is the most possibly optimized snow pole globe Santa's workshop city that I've ever seen. We got Estadio here, we got Biosphere here, we got Coliseum here, Statue of Liberty here, Sydney Opera House, whatever this is, the, the that looks like the, <laughs> that kind of looks like the CN Tower, the needle thing in Toronto. I don't know what this is, but that's gotta be something I should know better. And I got harp, like this is ridiculous. This is, they got power. You got giant trucks that are almost as big as buildings. This is the most, uh, you got the Golden Gate Bridge. This is perfectly optimized. I don't know what you're talking about, but you get a number. The other day I realized that Egypt could make a really good preserved, uh, here we go, here are more preserved stuff. 
Oh, people do this all the time. They make these super fancy preserves and they're almost never worth it when you actually play the game. No one tell White and Nerdy, don't show this to him. He's going to see this and he's going to go to his stream and it's going to be an Egypt run where he's only allowed to do this preserve shenanigans with sphinxes and stuff. My God. Trying to set this up in a real game is the worst possible idea if you're actually trying to like win a game on Deity. If you're trying to get something that looks really cool, then it's fantastic. But my Lord, this is this is too much for me. I can't handle this. This is like that time Potato McWhiskey did a video where he set up these like dams and aqueducts and industrial zones and he's like you can get five cities with these aqueducts and these dams and these industrial zones and all the industrial zones will be like plus 15 and i'm like you can't do that you can't do that <laughs> like, you can try but i don't think it's gonna work very well um so what this is good at doing is showing off how you can use certain things to make your preserves better uh, what it's not good at doing is giving you advice i would advise you not to try this if you are trying to like win a game of civ comfortably if you're just trying to make something that looks cool though and is pretty interesting, this is fantastic. Go preserves. Oh my God, oh my God, it showed up. More than a year ago, Potato McWhiskey promised more of these. Did I myth miss them or did we all forget about these? Am I gonna have to dunk on these again? I'm such a bad person. Looking for configuration guides like these. Here, here's how I recommend approaching these kind of things. You can make a million zone configuration guides like this, and you should. I'm not dunking on their helpfulness in helping to understand how districts work and how you can use those districts to get better adjacency. So what we're learning here is that you wanna you know, settle your cities where you can get an aqueduct to make your industrial zones better and having all these districts tightly packed together will increase the adjacency of the commercial hubs and the industrial zones. That's what we're learning here. The problem is when you load up a game of Civ, you're just gonna get a map and the map is gonna have luxury resources you can't remove, strategic resources you can't remove, oasises, wherever the hell they are, mountains just in some random weird pattern. You are almost never going to get a map where you are just able to take a configuration and use it. Almost never, it's like playing chess. I don't think, like any one chess position is almost impossible to replicate a second time. I, I don't think that this is really replicatable. So what I recommend doing is making something like this can be helpful for understanding how the districts work for sure. But what I recommend doing instead is uh, loading up real maps in Civ, turning on the pin mod that shows you what the adjacency of the pins are, and then moving your pins around to maximize the adjacency. I think you'll learn a lot more. And what you'll be doing is you'll be building these configurations on real maps that you loaded that have these X factors in them. I just don't think this is very practical to be like Stardew Valley. In Stardew Valley, it's very practical to have a farm layout because the farm layout is always the same and you can always clear it and you can do that. Having a layout like this in Civ is just pointless because like there's better ways to learn what it's teaching you, I think. This guy spawned on four continents. Cool, that's fantastic. I hope this game went well. <laughs> Wine, wine mom tier list. Raging alcoholic, Eleanor and Cleo. I agree with both. Vineyard tourist. Okay, vineyard tourist. Anyone here I disagree with? I I feel like I feel like Magnificence Catherine is like a raging alcoholic, but in the um I'm thinking like 18th or 19th century, like 1810s, Regency era, like the artsy parties where everyone's loose, people are like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what kind of party I'm thinking of. People are maybe getting a little high or something. Uh, that's where I imagine Magnificence. Like a masquerade? I don't know. Anyways, it doesn't matter. Uh, I'll agree with this. I'll agree with this. That's fine. Weekend Warrior. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Victoria. Cool. Uh, Christina. I don't know about... I don't know about Catherine here. Tomorrow's a Weekend Warrior. That's fine. Only at gatherings. Uh, Wilhelmina and Dido for sure. I feel like Scythia, I feel like people drink in between battles. I feel like people get super drunk in between battles, which maybe counts as gatherings, but I get the I get the impression that Scythia is winning a ton of battles. I think Scythia is in the weekend warrior category. I'm more <laughs> I'm more of a beer person. <laughs> Maya and Sienduk, that's fine, that's all good. You're going to end up like your father if you don't quit Vietnam. Okay, yeah, 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 I agree. I mostly agree with this tier list. This is fantastic. This is hilarious. Yeah, the comments also seem to back me up that Catherine is way too low. So I feel like I did okay there. Uh, Bad tree is face says you bring shame upon your family. It does. This is this is my kind of tier list content. I'm so into this. This is a great post. I finally visited the Petra. Well, good for you, King Froggislav. That's great. Look, that sounds... That, 
I'm aware that sounded really sarcastic. That was not meant to be that way. If you ever get the chance to travel, and I know not everyone is going to have an equal opportunity to travel. However, if you do get the chance, these world wonders are fantastic. I've been to Machu Picchu. I found it absolutely just one of the coolest experiences of my entire life. So uh, if you are able to, and you're wondering to yourself, is it worth traveling? Is it worth seeing the world? Should I go to a place like this? Absolutely. I'm super happy for King Frogislav to have visited the Petra. And I'm hoping you, dear viewer, get the chance to travel and explore and visit a place that you'll find just as cool. Civ 6 fan art. Look, I don't have much to say about this, but I am in support of artists. Artists, you are all so talented, okay? And I am the shittiest artist of all time, and I have so much respect for you and what you're doing. So if you are out there and you are a writer, you are like a, a, a an artist that, what is a, not a, just an artist that draws or paints or whatever, whether you crochet or you knit or you play music or you act or you sing, whatever it is, whatever kind of art you are doing, I am endlessly in awe of your talent and you just make, you just make me very happy. So we're gonna upvote this fan art, which is absolutely fantastic. I don't have much to say about it, because I'm just not a, I'm just not an art person. However, uh, endless respect for for people who are talented at these kind of things. It's absolutely unbelievable. Oh, this is gonna be relatable. When you get beat up on all fronts in deity, but the game rewards you anyway. Taxation without representation. As England lose the city to disloyalty, which has an ex established financier governor. That's so funny. <laughs> That's so good. That's such a, there are a few achievements in Civ 6 that are very clever like this one. There's a few other ones that I would really like. I think it'd be such a cool achievement if you got all the governor promotions, like those types of things. Um, but I'm happy that these kind of achievements exist because that's hilarious. This is pretty much like the, um, the American Revolution, isn't it? I guess it's pretty much, they're like, I hate the fact that you're taxing my tea. I would like to make a kingdom of eagles, cheeseburgers, and weapons. Like, get out of here, England. I'm pretty sure that's how that happened. When given a choice, would you play with or without navigable rivers in Civ 6? With. It's gotta be with. I think it would make naval civs a lot better too. Like I think civs that create boats would be a lot better. And sometimes they're they're not the not the highest tier civs all the time. And so yeah, imagine a civ like Harold that can go through navigable rivers. I think that'd be great. I'm a, I'm in on these. I'm in. I'm a yay vote on navigable rivers, but I want to hear your defense in the comments of why we shouldn't do navigable rivers. I feel like this post is just begging me to do my own Pantheon tier list video. So if you'd like to see an updated video from me, I would love to do one. Just let me know in the comments if that's something you'd be interested in. Um, but we have Comrade Kane here. I'm just getting another vote for doing all this artwork. This is great. Um, but let's let's see how we did with the Pantheon tier list here. So let's start at the bottom. Uh, I, can't, I can't like analyze this. So I'm just going to kind of agree or disagree uh, just to keep this video not 18 hour long. Uh, God of War and God of Healing, both terrible, both six, absolutely. Um, five, God of Craftsman, City Patron Goddess, and Initiation Rites. I think God of Craftsman might be a little low, and that could be because um, I usually play on better balanced starts, and so I can usually, you know, rely on getting enough strategic resources for God of Craftsman to be worth it. Horses are often kind of your best production tiles in your early cities, and getting an extra production and faith early on, I think, is a little valuable. So I think I think God of Craftsman is a little low, but mostly agree with this. Uh, God of the Sea, Earth, God of Stone, Circles, Fertility Rights, all at number four. I agree with this. I had an argument with chat today on stream, actually, twitch.tv slash Van Bradley. If you want to watch me play Civilization VI live, that's a fun place to hang out. Um, but I, uh, we had we had missed all the really good pantheons, and uh, chat really wanted me to take Fertility Rights, and I kind of refused to do it because I really hate Fertility Rights. And so we had like a little tete-a-tete -tete about... Uh, this is a pantheon so I'll, I'll, i think four is reasonable i'd put it down in five or six but i think a lot of people would have it up here in four or three so we'll call four like a reasonable middle i agree with most of this i think these are all very dependent on on the map right like these are all these all can be very good if you have the map to support it like the camps or the volcanoes going off or whatever it is or the um Desert floodplains, marsh oasis. So if you have the map that works for these, these are like two or one. If you have a map that doesn't work for these, these are like five or six. And so I don't think these are ever actually three. I think they're either practically when you're playing either two or one or five or six, but um, that's like a happy middle here because you have to see what the map says about it. All right, number two, goddess of festivals, god of the open sky, sacred path, river goddess, and divine spark. Uh, I think Goddess of Festivals is better than God of the Open Sky. However, I don't know if this goes in number one. We'll kind of see once we get to number one. But I don't think this is three. And so I think maybe both of them and two is fine. 
Uh, Sacred Path is not good. I have this way lower because I usually chop my rainforest. If I am going for holy sites, typically I'm doing all the river stuff that's a lot better. And I want to chop my rainforest because um, faith often means a uh, culture, appeal, those types of things are happening. And rainforest kind of don't work with that. I think Sacred Path is terrible. Nowhere near number two for me. But hey, I'm glad this person likes Sacred Path. If you like it, that's fine. I'm not here to I'm not here to dunk on your picks. Just for me, I, I think Sacred Path is awful. Uh, river goddess plus two amenities plus two housing to cities that they have a holy site adjacent to a river this is the river stuff i was talking about when this clicks this really freaking clicks so it's, yeah number two maybe number three because it's map specific like this but that's all good uh divine spark is definitely number two still works well great people points it's not fancy but it gets the job done for um for especially for the uh, libraries and amphitheaters so that's number two for me uh, absolutely all right number one religious settlements is the best pantheon and it's not even close so that's number one uh god of the forge god of the forge is interesting because oh man how do i describe this it sounds like it's really, really good. And then you use it and it's not really, really good. And I think that if you really commit to God of the Forge, and I think this might be a deity thing, on deity, what I want are these cultures, these faiths, these things that I'm gonna have trouble getting. I'm not gonna have trouble getting and building military units, right? Like, especially if I have barb clans on as well. I just think there are better ways. You can put the Agog card in. You can build an early encampment. There are better ways to get the units than to use your Pantheon on it when the rest of this stuff is kind of available. I think God of the Forge is like number three, maybe less than that. I really don't think it's practical that much on Deity. However, what I will say is if you're not playing on Deity or you really commit to it, then it is probably quite good, but I don't think it's near number one for me. Monument to the Gods. I'm not going to argue with this. I think this is a this is an S tier uh, pantheon. I, it's one of those ones that's not fancy, so a lot of people don't pick it. Um, but kind of scaling that production with the production card that gives you wonders. And I realize I am slightly contradicting myself because I just said the unit added production isn't helpful with the policy card. And I still mean that there are differences, but I think this production for the wonders really scales well with the wonder production card. So I think this is great, um, especially on higher difficulties when you're trying to get those wonders more quickly than the AI. So that's fantastic. Dance of the Aurora and Desert Folklore. Um, they have the same problem as these ones have is like you need the map for it and the sieve for it. Um, so if we're going by that logic, they should be number three. But I will say, if you have the map for Dance of the Aurora or Desert Folklore, they are undeniably in the number one tier, without a doubt. Look, I pray to our Lord and Savior Coupe that one day people will find the screenshot buttons on their devices. Now, like, look, I don't know what device this person's playing on because this, this looks like a console uh, UI here, but surely there's a screenshot button instead of like a phone photo. But anyways... I digress. Casual eight science adjacency bonus, Great Barrier Reef Campus. That's, that's pretty rad, dude. I don't got much else to say. Uh, pro master men, find the screenshot button. But otherwise, uh, this is sexy as, and I'm super into it. True Start Earth is whack. It is whack. This is so funny. <laughs> this is very funny. I love this very much. Um, True Start has its problems, and I don't play a lot of True Start games for this reason because uh, it's very dependent on who else is in your game. But I love very much that there's a script in the game that allows this kind of settling to happen. That's fun. <laughs> I, I, I'm 100% sure I know what's going to happen <laughs> before I watch this video, and it's going to look so funny. Okay, I'm pretty sure it died. I was going to settle the city. <laughs> and then I'm pretty sure because there's nowhere for the tiles to go, it kind of moves them around in weird ways. <laughs> this is going to be so funny to watch. <laughs> Oh, uh, I've definitely done this to civs in the game where just out of spite you go and settle the dumbest cities just to like, just to piss them off. Where is it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it just extends like a slinky all the way to the back. That's so good. This one is super relatable as well. Boats, where we're going, we don't need boats. Going to nanotech before you've got uh, frigates. This happens to me all the time. Uh, but when I was starting to play on Deity for the very first time and kind of learning the patterns and learning what I should and shouldn't be doing, I would frequently win entire games with like giant death robots having not unlocked a single harbor, like not even unlocked a harbor to repair. So if I took over a city and it had a harbor, I couldn't even repair it 
because I hadn't got the Harbor Civ. And so I, I, I relate to this very much. Yo, it's our guy Inquisitive Otter. I've already seen this on Twitter. It's rare that I come to Reddit and I've already seen the thing before I kind of react. The whole point of this video is that I'm seeing it for the first time to react to it or these videos would suck. Um, and maybe to you, they do suck. I don't know. Um, but we're gonna have this Inquisitive Otter. I actually met Inquisitive Otter in real life, which I don't think he's done like a face reveal. So it's super cool that me and Bostheus and White and Nerdy have this like inside information because we've met Inquisitive Otter, but he's super cool. He has a great YouTube channel. He makes fantastic Civ content. And this is going, uh, if you've seen any of my Biosphere tourism wins, this is kind of what I do as well. But this is uh, this is absolutely hilarious. My guess is that he has 4,000, maybe 4,000 or 5,000 tourism. Um, but yeah, I'm super in, on, oh my goodness. I'm super in on this Biosphere, just Biosphere strategy. I'm super into this power strategy. This is fantastic. I, I love this very much. This is just super rad. Streaming Potato McWhiskey while playing. No wonder she has more deity wins than me. This is how I learned Civ. I'm not gonna lie to you. I remember sitting here like this. I got three monitors though, so it was on another monitor. And I remember watching Potato McWhiskey in the game mechanic while I was playing Civ. This is before there was anyone else playing, right? Like, so those were your two options if you wanted regular Civ content. And you just plop on the YouTube videos, you learn a ton from Potato and you play Civ as you go along. And I, lots of fond memories from this. This is great. <laughs> Potato McWhiskey's in the comments. <laughs> Is your girlfriend single? <laughs> oh, I love this so much. This is so good. Potato's the best. Potato's the... Forget everything I said about the things earlier, the, the placement thingies, the diagrams. That is it, everybody. We have conquered Reddit for one more month. We will be back on r slash Civ in February. If you enjoyed this video, like button, subscribe button, comments down below. Check the description for a ton of links. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.